So let's take a look at how we could create a project and put some peripherals in the fabric, maybe a UART or an I2C or something. So I'm going to create a new Libro project and I'm going to give my project a name. And I'll just call this uh, uh, Fabric uh, Peripheral. Let's call it fabric peripherals. I could call it anything. And I'll just stick with Verilog again as the language, even though I could also do this in VHDL. Uh, I'll choose a dyne package like we've seen before. And I'm going to choose the 090TS because that's what's on one of the boards that you have. And we'll choose the dash one speed grade and the commercial temperature grade. And I'm going to say next. I'm going to leave the default IO settings. So I'm not going to change anything there. Well, I'll change the supply voltage. I just remembered the supply voltage is 3.3 in that board. I'll say next. And I'm going to use System Builder for this design because I'm going to configure the microcontroller subsystem. And I don't have any other files I'm going to import, so I'm just going to say finish at this point. And what's going to come up is a dialog box that will ask me to name my system. Uh, and I'll just call this SF2 underscore MSS. This is going to be my microcontroller subsystem. Um, block. So now System Builder opens and there's a series of tabs and it will ask me to make choices for things that I want in the design and then based on the choices I make we're going to see um, other tabs open. So I could choose to use the external memory controller, uh, the on-chip flash memory, um, this particular device does not have two DDR controllers, it only has one so you see fabric DDR controller is shadowed out. Uh, we have the Surtees block, and then we could use things like the Watchdog Timer, the Peripheral DMA, and the Real-Time Counter. So any of these we want to use, we would select. And you see in some cases when you select things, they become highlighted. Um, so I'll say Next. And now in the Memories page, I have a page where I could go in and I could create a partition in the flash memory that I might use maybe to hold my, uh, my code. So I'll just call this PGM Store. And what I'm going to do here is, because I don't actually have the file that I want to program in just yet, uh, I'm going to say that it's a placeholder. And we won't program it, but we're going to leave that partition available so that later on we can come back after we've developed the code and we can program it into there. And then we can set the width 8, 16, or 32 bits, and I'll set it as 32. And I'll just say 8192 words, and I'll say OK. So I have this, 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 what we call a client. It's a partition in the memory. This shows me how much of the memory I've used and how much is still available. And I could create other partitions if I wanted to. So we'll say next. And now we get to the peripherals page. So here we can enable or disable the hard peripherals. The peripherals are part of the microcontroller subsystem that are actually implemented as standard cell. Um, and we can also add peripherals from the slave cores list here. These peripherals would be put in the fabric. And we'll start out, we'll configure some of these. I'm just going to enable some and disable some of the peripherals that are in the MSS. And I'm going to enable the general purpose I.O. And I'll just bring one bit out. I'll bring it out as an output. I'll connect it through the fabric, which means it's going to be, instead of connected to uh, one of the dedicated pins that I could use. I'll take it into the fabric and I'll make, I can connect it to any pin I want to connect it to. Uh, that might be useful for the board because I could drive it on LEDs or some, somewhere that's connected on the board. The other thing up here, I have um, a, a subsystem is called the MSS FIC0 MSS Master Subsystem and the MSS FIC0 Fabric Master Subsystem. So Smart Fusion 2 devices have a block that's called the, the FIC, the Fabric Interface Controller. It allows you to put slaves in the fabric that can be accessed by the cortex and it also allows you to put a master in the fabric that could access the peripherals that are part of the microcontroller subsystem. Uh, in this case if I wanted to add maybe another I2C or another UART I would just grab a, a peripheral and I would just drag it and I'm going to drag it under the MSS master subsystem. So all this is going to do is it's going to extend the peripheral set that's in the Cortex-M3. And when we see the memory map, you'll be able to see where these are. We'll also throw a UART in there. Uh, once you've put these peripherals in, you can just change the quantity right here if you want. So if you needed more, uh, you could just put in two or three. 
So this allows you to customize the design. You still have the hard peripherals, but now you have peripherals in the fabric that get mapped into the Cortex memory space. Uh, then I'm going to say next, and here I'm going to go in and I can configure the clocking. Um, I have a number of different clocks that I can generate, and if I select the clock, you see it highlights over here. So it gives you a better idea of exactly which clock you're looking at. And I can choose my clock source. And I could choose the clock source to come from the fabric or from some dedicated inputs. But I'm going to choose one of the oscillators. And I'll choose the 2550 megahertz oscillator. And just to keep things quick and simple, I'll just leave all the default settings here. Although we could go as fast as 166 megahertz. Then I'll say next. Uh, I have a number of options here for the microcontroller itself and is selecting a clock source for the real-time counter and options for the PDMA, uh, for the Cortex itself, the cache controller. I'm just going to skip through these. Um, and then we have the ability to enable EDAC, uh, error detection and correction for many of the memory blocks that are in Smart Fusion 2. And uh, we also refer to this as Single Error Correct Double Error Detect, or SECDED. So by default, the SECDED is disabled, but I could enable it. And if I enable it, I could also uh, generate indicators uh, that um, tell me I have a 1-bit error, a 2-bit error, or both. And those can generate interrupts, and they can also expose a bus to the fabric. So you can monitor that in the fabric. I'll just leave that disabled for now. Uh, next, we have uh, the security page, and in the security page, uh, we have masters that are grouped together. There's uh, four groups of masters, and there's five memory slaves, and we can specify whether or not memory masters can access these slaves, and if they can access it for reading or for writing or both. Uh, this is a feature that's only available in the devices with the data security features or the S suffixes and the particular part we chose was the uh, O90TS so this is available. Uh, devices that don't have the um, S suffix you would see this page would be shadowed out. And then I'll say next and what's going to happen here is we're going to see interrupts that are going to be generated from fabric peripherals. So I have an interrupt from my core I2C that we put in the fabric. And I actually have a number of interrupt sources um, that could come from the UART, TX Ready, RX Ready, Parity Error, and so on. And those are going to be ORed together. And then they're going to go into one of the inputs for the fabric um, interrupt controller. So there's, there's an interrupt controller with inputs from the fabric. You have 16 inputs that can come from the fabric. So what we're doing here with the UART is we're going to OR together a number of different signals to generate just one input for an interrupt. And if there's an interrupt, that ISR would go out and read the status registers in core UART APB and figure out what was the source of the interrupt. Then we'll say next. And what we're going to see here is um, this is my uh, APB bus. Uh, this is going to connect to the FIC. And then I have two slaves out there, a core I2C and a core UART APB. And the way the memory map is set up for the Smart Fusion 2 devices, there's actually some aliasing. So I could access the I2C at 3000, 000, 000, 000, or at 5000, 000, 000, 000, 000. And the same thing happens with uh, the UART. Uh, the UART's at 3000, 1000 or 5,000, 1,000. And you could even change these around if you wanted to. There's little uh, drop-down menus, so I could uh, redo the memory map if I wanted to just by moving those around. And then when I say Finish, it will take a few minutes, and my design will be generated. And once the design is generated, there may be some pins that I want to promote to the top level, so they'll be uh, ports on this component that's created and when I run through the synthesis step then those pins would have IO pads put in and I could make pin assignments and ultimately I could program the design into the board. So here I have my component now uh, this component that we created and I can do things this is a fabric reset if I don't want to use it, I could just tie it high. It's an active low signal. Uh, here are the pins for my UART, and I might just promote those to the top level so that I have um, the ability to connect those to pins. 
So I can right-click and say promote the top level. And I have uh, an MSS ready indicator that I could use if I had some other fabric logic if I wanted to know when the MSS was ready to use. And I also have a, a reset signal that I could use if I had other logic in the fabric. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to have any. So I'll just mark it as unused um, like this. And I'm going to generate my design. So what this does is it generates the top level. Now what I wanted to show you is on the design hierarchy tab, uh, here is my, um, my MSS component I created. Now I can open this and view it two ways. If I double click, click on this, it will reopen System Builder. But if I right click, I can say uh, convert to smart design. And uh, when I say convert to smart design, uh, it will take a minute. It will open this into Smart Design Canvas, and you can see exactly what was added. So what we have in this view, if I zoom in a little bit, that's the microcontroller subsystem right there. This is my core APB3. This is the fabric interface controller. And here's my UART. And then down here is um, my core IT, I2C. So you see the I2C and the UART are connected to core APB3, and they're connected through the fabric interface controller. So this, the Cortex sitting up here in the MSS would just write to an address space, and it would either talk to the UART or it would talk to the I2C. And then the I2C generates an interrupt that's carried back into one of the 16 interrupts that goes back to the Cortex. And the other one we mentioned, there was a number of signals that came out of the UART. These get ORed together. So you see there's these OR gates, and they get OR'd together, and ultimately they form uh, a single interrupt that goes back to the um, cortex as well. And then the cortex would go off when it's interrupted, and it would either the ISR would go out and deal with the I2C, or it would go out and um, it would figure out by reading the registers in Coryord APB what was the source of the interrupt, and then it would deal with that accordingly. Now this is shifting gears slightly, but now that we're in we're in uh, System Builder here. Would you mind mentioning about back annotation? What can and cannot be done? So if you if you make a change under oh so um, if if I go to the system from the System Builder view to the Smart Design view like this, I could go in and I could make changes. But once I've made changes here, if I reopen the design in System Builder, I'll lose the changes. So um, there are a few configurations that you could set if you were to open the MSS configurator, for instance. You'll see there's a view here, and I could go in and make some adjustments to some of the peripherals that aren't available in System Builder. But if I make changes here, I don't want to go back to System Builder because I would lose those changes. So that's kind of an important thing that once you've, once you've made a change, uh, if you've gone to this view and you've made a change, you don't want to go back to System Builder because you'll lose your changes. Uh, but once I've done this, I could go through and make my pin assignments in, and I could go through the normal flow where I would synthesize and run layout and so on. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can configure my firmware, and I can generate firmware cores. So I can come down here under Configure Firmware Cores, and I can say Open Interactively. And I will have um, drivers for the Smart Fusion 2 peripherals I'm using, and I will also have drivers for um, I'll also have drivers uh, for the fabric peripherals. So you see there's no Smart Fusion 2. And I can create sample projects either for the drivers uh, that are driving the Smart Fusion 2 peripherals. And I can do the same thing for the peripherals that are put in the fabric. So I can generate some sample projects. I can also create firmware. So I can say export firmware. And I can just say run. Um, choose the tool I'm going to use, either Soft Console or IAR or Kyle. And I will get firmware drivers for all of the peripherals that are part of the microcontroller subsystem and my fabric peripherals. So I can create the firmware drivers I need to develop my own code. And I can also have um, some little sample projects that I can use. It kind of show me how I can use the, uh, the drivers and the APIs that are in the drivers. When I get finished, the little dialog box should tell me that my drivers were created. Um, I can go over here to the Files tab, and I can see them. Uh, they'll be under Firmware. 
look under drivers here. So here's my drivers, Core I2C, Core UART APB. These are fabric drivers. All the other ones say MSS. These are drivers uh, for the MSF peripherals. And there's also a little platform.h file here that shows me where the addresses are of the Core UART and the uh, I2C that are in the fabric. And then finally, I have my data sheet, which I just seem to have lost. Um, and the data sheet would show me the memory map. I can export that. So I'll just go into the uh, file men menu here. Oh, I'm sorry, design menu. Go to design summary. And uh, I can uh, export this, um, this little memory map. Um, and I could go out and I could open that. So here I can see the memory map for my system. And so this is going to show me uh, the memory map of all the hard peripherals, like the DDR controllers and things. But it'll also show me here's Core UART, here's Core I2C. Mm. Okay. Um, and the uh, platform.h file has um, the addresses in there. So it actually only shows one of the two ranges. You can actually address that in two different ranges as alias. But we have all of the drivers there, and I could have generated some sample projects as well. Uh, so I could take these projects into the software IDE tool that I'm using, and I could have a little simple application running very quickly that uses the, um, the different uh, drivers. The other thing about the drivers, the drivers are all fully documented too, so you can open documentation. There's release notes and there's a user guide uh, that explains in more detail how to use all of the different functions that are included.